What's going on guys? Hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Anyways, welcome back to the DX Gamer Show. My name is Mike, aka Operation DX, and welcome to episode 30. So we had a little bit of a mishap during the previous episode, and we lost one of our mining craft. Fortunately, the pilot survived. I was able to burn just before we hit the ground. I did not see the ground coming, and holy cow. So getting out of the craft seemed to fling the craft up into the air. More things are exploding. My Kerbal is having a seriously hard time regaining orientation, and I'm actually becoming a little concerned here as, okay, there we go. Uh, we got control, thank goodness. I did not want to lose my pilot. After all of that, surviving the crash and then <laughs> getting out seemed to be even more dangerous. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down a sign here saying I need help. Now, fortunately, with this debris and the flag down on the ground, I will now have something to give me some indication that uh, there is ground rapidly <laughs> approaching because I couldn't see anything on my way, way down. I was 16,000 meters above the surface when I impacted, so I was not expecting that at all. I was approaching at a relatively fast velocity. I burned really, really, really hard, and it was not enough to save the craft. Anyways, I don't know what I'm doing here because my Kerbal can't come along on this mission. So I put, uh, I put Bob inside here, but Bob, Bob needs to get out because there's only room for one Kerbal aboard my second mining craft. And it certainly is a good thing that I didn't just have one mining craft. I have a redundant mining craft, which is, well, it's all the better now. It's it's good that I designed it this way. Anyways, now I'm just going to go ahead and burn and do my uh, my rescue mission here. Rescue missions are fun, at least when your Kerbals don't die. And Kerbals are precious. I don't want to spend another, what, 130,000 to hire another Kerbal. And this pilot is already leveled up, so I don't want to lose her. She's, uh, she's a good pilot. Although I probably should have Probably should have brought Jeb along. That was actually something that was mentioned in the comments. It's like, why did you not take Jeb, Bill, and Bob along for this mission? Because we want to see more Jeb, Bill, and Bob. And hey, I get it. I understand. But that's not quite how it worked out. Um, and there's reasons for it. I mean, our scientists had high levels and... Bob didn't have such a high level, but I brought him along. So we have at least one of the famous three along with us. Anyways, I'm not sure if this is where the space Kraken lives, but um, it would be very suiting if this is in fact where that Easter egg is, the space Kraken, because, well, it struck. <laughs> Actually, it didn't. It's just this, this body, as I talked about in the previous episode, it doesn't have those little, what is it, scatter terrain where there's little rocks all over the place and you can kind of get a good idea of where things are located. Here, <laughs> here you just cannot see it and landing down on the dark side, which I typically don't like to do, is quite challenging. Uh, it would be nice if there was some sort of like, uh, maybe part that gave you an actual distance to ground that would really help in the dark thing, uh, dark situations. I mean, so that that's my two ideas for future expansions for Kerbal Space Program. One, either have like a infrared science package thing that can detect your actual ground level and you can monitor it as you approach in the dark, or have a module that allows you to uh, pretty much green screen it and have a thermal imaging so you can actually see the surface as you approach. In this case, we're okay because we can uh, we can see the flag and we can see the numbers. We know exactly how high we are from the surface and I can appropriately slow down my speed and come down for a nice gentle landing like I typically like to do. Now, if we lost the secondary landing craft, we would be in uh, well, we wouldn't be in huge trouble, but we couldn't 
rescue this Kerbal. Um, unless I wanted to do some kind of, I would say, a dangerous maneuver with the goddess ship. And <laughs> I don't know. Uh, perhaps maybe I could have done a capture. Because Bop is like another one of those uh, really light, low-gravity planets. Uh, maybe I could have used my RCS to get back up into the station. I don't know. Wouldn't want to risk it, though. I want to make sure that my Kerbals, my Kerbals survive. All right, so we have a autonomous spacecraft, and uh, we got Bob out of there. So now we have a spot for my pilot. I think her name's Valentina. Valentina-ish. Yeah. So she's good to go. She has a place. She will make it back. And this allows me to complete my mission. Because I, in fact, when I landed down, well, these don't have transmitters on them. Uh, they can only collect the science. They cannot tr transmit the science off. So I have to either transmit the science when I get back to the goddess or just keep the data for when I return to Kerman. However, whatever. Although, uh, I would have to offload the science data onto another craft using Kerbals. Okay, so I'm having trouble um, figuring out this whole transfer thing. So uh, it was mentioned to me in the comments that I could transfer Kerbals between modules using the same system as the uh, fuel transfer system, but I'm not seeing it. Maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Uh, maybe I'm doing the wrong, because usually what I do is the alt-click on one tank, alt-click on the other tank, and then you get the in and out symbol, and you can transfer. So I was, uh, I just did a test. I loaded up a craft at the, um, the launch center, and I put a, uh, you know, a crew module and a command pod. And I had one Kerbal inside, and I tried to transfer the Kerbal from the command pod to the crew pod. And I could not figure out how to do it. I know that there was a mod that allowed you to transfer Kerbals, and that's another one that I really, really like. And just that being in the core game is awesome, uh, if it's true. I just I couldn't figure out how to do it. So um, maybe Marcus can uh, let me know, because uh, Marcus is the one who told me that. <laughs> all right, so returning to our craft here. We got all the science data we needed, and that essentially completes one of the last contracts we need to do because we had the exploration contract to BOP. And I uh, pretty much wrapped that up with uh, going in a stable orbit, getting the science stuff. Yeah, we did, we did all of it. So now we have just that one contract that I said I was kind of worried about, which is the one that we went to Ike and, and returned. But we flew over to Jewel. We did a detour. And now that I've talked about uh, going to Bop, or not Bop, Moho, so often in the latest few episodes, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to have to do it. So I don't know if I'm going to detour, though, honestly. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect enough science to wrap up the tech tree. Um, we will do, at the end of this episode, we'll do uh, a tech tree... Um, work up. We'll, we'll, we'll start unlocking some more techs and then I'll finish it off, whatever I need to do here because uh, there's plenty of science. I've got uh, the, the labs pretty much loaded up with data. So I just need to accelerate time to uh, knock off that extra like two or three thousand science that I'll get and I should be really, 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 really close to finishing off the tech tree. And then uh, what I'm going to do is when I return to Kerbin, I'm going to do like a homecoming mission which will be done with a SSTO, which I have been working on and I've been testing some stuff. So probably today I'm going to do a KSP extra video, uh, just kind of showing off some of the testing. Some of it was uh, disastrous. Some of it was pretty fun. Um, quite challenging in this new aerodynamic model. I used to be kind of becoming a pro at doing the SSTO thing, but it, it seems to be a little bit harder. At least to me, it seems to be a little bit harder to do with the new aerodynamics model in Kerbin. And you know me, I can't just do normal craft. I have to do like freaking monstrosities things. Uh, one of the craft I'm working on is literally like a hundred freaking tons 
I mean, what am I doing trying to create an SSTO that's 100 tons? And you know what's interesting about it is it's not like this super elaborate, like bizarre looking craft like I usually create. No, it's pretty, it's sleek. It doesn't look like it has a ton of parts. Um, I think it has a pretty clean design. I don't know. Uh, the other SSTO that I worked on that's a little smaller is um, the one that's kind of working a little better. But I want to use the really heavy one. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. It's quite interesting. But yes, I plan to do a homecoming mission uh, to get all my Kerbals back. And what I should do is get Jeb off of the uh, the surface of Minmus back into the station. And then that way I can do like a flyby, pick Jeb up. Ooh, do I have room for Jeb? Yeah, yeah, I have a command pod for, for Jeb. There's, there's uh, three Kerbals on this mission. So two scientists and I have a three person command pod. So yeah, we'll pick, we'll swing by and we'll pick Jeb up. And then I'll launch the SSTO, dock it up to this craft. And then I will uh, get everybody back home. They'll get their experience and all that, which is awesome. And then uh, we'll do a mission to Moho. How does that sound? Does that sound cool to you guys? I don't know. Uh, I know one of you guys are really interested to see what uh, this Mo hole is all about. So, yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm not sure. You know, I could still continue uh, with the whole interplanetary fuel network thing. But uh, the goddess kind of like re... I mean, this is kind of like almost like a mobile fueling station in, in its own right. So... If I did get a craft that got stranded at, like, say, Jewel or some other place, this craft could come out and rescue it and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, there's another thing I can do. There's another thing I can do. Uh, and there's something that's been asked in the comments. And that is to start back up uh, one of my old series. However, uh, before I went on my YouTube hiatus, I had actually planned... To do a into the future let's play series of Kerbal Space Program um, with all that uh, really cool stuff. I don't know if you guys remember. Uh, I, w I had the jump drive and uh, a lot of really neat stuff and some edits, and I had like really cool uh, custom stuff that I did that made the game look really great with the clouds and all that and the lightning. I thought it was just freaking awesome. Anyways, so yeah. Looking here at the contracts, we have completed pretty much everything except for the Ike return. So we have a freaking butt ton of money. We have 4.56 million freaking credits. We have 4,800 science. So we are going to be able to unlock a ton of stuff here. So large fuel tanks. These make it quite easy to get into orbit, actually, if you unlock like the Rhino engine with those tanks. It has a really decent ISP. Not spectacular, it's not like hugely rewarding, but it certainly makes it a lot easier to get craft into orbit. Also, when I uh, launch a replacement craft and some other craft, I'm thinking about putting a station up in the orbit of Kerbin, uh, I will use fairings. So there is a couple other things that I have kind of like in the back burner of thoughts that I possibly could do after the homecoming mission. I'm thinking about launching another station up into the orbit of Kerbin, uh, but that'll all be quick. That'll all happen in like one episode, I think. Anyways, just kind of going to town here with a tech tree, unlocking just all of those smaller things that uh, I haven't unlocked. So here, the ion stuff, probably not going to use it in the series. Uh, a lot of the space stuff. Uh, I'm going to get the Rhino engine and the, the big thing. I'll go ahead and grab this like hugely gi ginormous fuel tank. Um, let's see, what do we have here? Yeah, I'll go ahead and grab this stuff, more airplane stuff, which I'll, I'll need for my SSTO stuff anyways. There's one more set of space plane parts that I haven't unlocked that gives me the rapier engine. I'm not really all that interested in it. Anyways, that wraps things up for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a great day and take care.